Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. The purpose of our organization is to positively and permanently transform the global environment for everyone and everything on this planet. The way that we do that is we function as a highest good for all organization, uh, collaborating as a group of 100% volunteers, working together to create the open source and free shared solutions tools, tutorials, resources, blueprints, everything necessary to create complete sustainable civilizations. Sustainable civilizations that address physical sustainability, the obvious things like food, energy, and housing, and combine these with the emotional and recreational sustainability aspects of highest good for all education, highest good for all for-profit and non-profit business models, highest good for all earth stewardship, highest good for all recreation, social architecture, and a culture of giving and contributing and collaborating to create a better world for everyone. And so this is what our organization is all about. And this is our weekly progress update, number 36, covering our team's progress and forward movement for the week of October 28th, 2013. If you've never seen one of our blogs before, the format is always the same. I'm going to go through a bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished, and then I will come back around and start over on that list and talk a little bit more in depth about what the details are of those accomplishments, what's happening behind the scenes, what you can expect in the future, and as always, if you're interested in a written blog that goes along with this, that discusses um, all the details of everything I'm talking about, includes images as well for everything that I'm talking about, the link to that written blog it can be found at, in the YouTube description. It's the first link there in the YouTube description, and you can also go to our uh, video, our blog on the website by going to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, this last week was a busy week. As always, we've accomplished lots of great things, starting with food. Uh, the food forest purchasing research is done. We researched over 85 different sources of plant material, endangered um, plant material, as well as just, just hard to find plant material and some of the common things as well. We've got all those details now posted up on the website. Uh, we're 25% done with the final food infrastructure, uh, final piece of our food infrastructure, the Zenapini number two. Uh, plant details are now 25% up on the website. They're all done behind the scenes, but we're putting the final ones up on the website, so we're 25% done with that. Uh, we're now creating a SketchUp plant database, which we realize this does not exist, so in support of our open source goals, we're creating a SketchUp plant database for finding uh, 2D and 3D images of plants in SketchUp. I'll explain why that's different from just searching SketchUp in a second. Uh, we're behind the scenes, we're also uh, working on the initial pricing for the roof, for the roof design for the Xenopenis and Wallopenis and Aquapenis, and we're putting all of those into CAD. So that's moving forward. On uh, the Earthbag Village, we've got a 3D update and pictures posted on the the um, link that I told you about that you can see in the YouTube in the YouTube description there. If you want to go to our written blog, you'll find uh, updated pictures for the Earth Earthbag Village. Evolving in 3D, including uh, doors and door changes and window updates, and uh, also ADA compliant um, units. We uh, we're also putting thanks to the help of, and that's the, thanks to the help of Devin Porter, uh, thanks to the help of Dave Wallen. We are now uh, we've got all of the Straw Bale Village rooms are now in CAD, and that's coming along really beautifully. And so an image is posted for that as well in the link. Um, Sago Center, Sago Center Duplicable City Hub, which is a huge part of our sustainable civilization model, is progressing forward now also. And this last week we completed stairs, stairs in the dining dome, um, stairs in the, uh, for access to the second floor, third floor, and fourth floor, the primary stairs by the ADA compliant um, elevator. So big progress on that. And education, we've done a bunch on the education model as well. All mostly behind the scenes, but I've got a great new image that's posted for the education math template that we've been talking about for the last couple weeks that is starting to come together. So the education math template 1.0 is now up with icons, the initial icons on there as we're starting to look at that. I'll talk about that in detail in a second. And then also behind the scenes, uh, the education social sciences uh, 1.0 timeline 
is complete and we realize that we need to add a few other details to that psychology um, law and the legal system as well as anthropology and one, oh and geography uh, are being added to that as well so that's really what the the overview of what we accomplished in the last week let me talk in depth or give at least a little bit more detail about all those different things and how this all relates to transforming the global environment what are or what our organizations doing and of course I always like to wrap up with how uh, number one thing that people can do right now to help one community if you're interested so back to food uh, food infrastructure that we are creating we talk about transforming the global environment obviously we're not just talking about what's going on with the oceans and what's going on with our air and our water what we're looking at is really transforming the way that people look at food as a whole like really really changing the way that people perceive food and exposing people to a diversity and a quality of food that far exceeds what is available in the grocery store and the reason why this is so important in our opinion is because if we can demonstrate that and we can get people interested enough in it and we can create a mass movement towards wanting more diversity to an interest in, in uh, more diver not only more diverse foods, but higher quality foods, the medicinal and nutritional benefits of diverse foods. If we can create enough public interest in that, we can transform the way that people look at food. And we can change the food industry. We can, we can shift the food industry to providing these things because people are interested in it. So from our perspective, we feel like um, people have become very disconnected from where their food's coming from. People don't know how to grow their own food anymore, a lot of people. People don't understand where exactly how animals are being raised or how to animal ra raise animals ethically uh, with integrity, how to grow food, high quality food without use of things that you wouldn't actually want to eat, pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and things that you would never really would want to put in your body but spraying them on your food. And so, um, yeah, we're addressing that. And a big part of that for us is uh, two different things. We have six different food infrastructures and we have the food forest. The food forest is our outdoor planting plan and this last week we completed the food forest purchasing details and put them or rather they were completed the week before but this last week we got them up on the website and so now you can see we researched over 80 almost 90 different providers of rare plants, endangered plants, plants that people never heard of or seen and uh, where to get everything that would be planted outside in the one community food forest. And so that research was an immense amount of work. It's research that's useful to anybody that does outdoor planting, because uh, when you Google plants just trying to buy stuff, you're only going to get the ones that are really paying for advertising or have super professional websites. So when you have a professional like Michael Martin on our team doing the research to find all of the organizations that produce the really amazing things that people are looking for, you could turn up some pretty awesome stuff. And so those details are up on the website now. If you want to see it, go to one community global forward slash food dash forest and you can see all the food forest details, every plant that we've uh, sourced out for exactly what it is that we're going to plant outside and then all of the different places where you can purchase all of those plants. And so some amazing amount of research and work that was done on that this last week. Also, I said we've completed 25% of Xenopini number two plants up on the website. They're all done behind the scenes, but we're doing the editing and getting those transferred over the website. So a quarter of that is done. And as the final food infrastructure for one community of the six food infrastructures that we'll be building as phase one of our food infrastructure. And our goal with all of those food infrastructures is to demonstrate how people can grow a diversity of foods, including tropical foods that they can't get at the grocery store higher quality, more nutritional value, more diverse uses, and we'll be open sourcing um, recipes and all the details on how to manage those plants, et cetera, as well as we continue to move forward. But our goal is to teach people that you could build something in your backyard, grow enough food for your entire block to supplement the diets of your entire block or a four or five block radius with foods that people have never even heard of, creating new business opportunities for people, for, for, uh, for markets, for um, Things uh, for different things like a farmer's market or selling to grocery stores or just a, a sharing environment where people could share something that people have never tried before. And so 25% um, of the plants on Xenopini 2 are up. If you want to see that, it is an amazing house, part of our open source botanical garden model, which you can read about, onecommunityglobal.org. 
forward slash botanical garden. Um, and yeah, it's uh, coming along. So if you go to the written blog, you can also see you'll have links to all of this stuff as well so that you can get the complete details. Um, also, I said that we we're creating a SketchUp plant database. What the heck is that? The reason why we're creating a SketchUp plant database is to realize that the common plants are found in SketchUp. And our team is capable of looking at all these plants because uh, Michael and Bear have decades of experience working with plants as a horticulturist and as a botanist. They could take a look at these plants and say, hey, you know, this is a whatever. It's a chestnut tree, but it could also be substituted for some of these other plants, some of these other trees. And nobody would know the difference because the SketchUp models aren't detailed enough to really look at the leaves and say, oh, this is this kind of tree or this is that kind of tree. And so what we're doing is we realize that we need this for our, for our project, but other projects are going to need this too for creating 3D renderings of what it is that we're doing to really create beautiful presentations before you get into the huge expense of building all this stuff. And so uh, we're doing the research on all the plants that are currently available in SketchUp, everything, and then and looking at what the quality of those plants are, categorizing them based on the different sections that they would go in, like the different types of plants, and then also marking those as 2D or 3D images. And then we're creating uh, the de a detailed database of what plants are available and what plants those plants look like. So the idea is that if somebody is looking for an odd tree, they'll be able to search this database and find it. And then we're talking about what would be necessary for us to create some of these other trees that really aren't available right now in SketchUp, but we want to really promote because they're either endangered or rare or um, just because they they're, have huge nutritional or medicinal benefits. And so we're creating this database as the first step in that. It's a big part of our open source project, and um, we see it as really, really important for supporting the uh, transformation of the global environment with relation to food and how people look at food, how people plan for food, how people uh, create food self-sufficiency and um, feeding themselves in ways that combat health problems, lead to uh, longer lives and healthier lives and happier lives. And so um, that's one of our approaches to the health aspect of society. So. Uh, in addition to that, moving on to housing, um, the initial pri oh no back to back to the food infrastructure. I said that behind the scenes we're working on initial pricing for the roof and we're putting all the food infrastructures into CAD. And so David Sweet, who we haven't even announced as a partner yet, but it's coming soon. I'm just waiting on the final details for his um, for his bio, and then we'll put that up. But David Sweet is getting all of the food infrastructure into CAD, and so we should start posting updates on uh, the evolution of food infrastructure in CAD here over the next few weeks. And uh, as part of that, we're starting to get the initial pricing for all of those food infrastructures. As I've said in other videos, our goal is to demonstrate and to share, free share for everybody, complete designs, complete materials costs, complete equipment costs and needs, complete blueprints and architectural plans, then how to work with your, your local county officials, to get permitting and all of those details, and then how to plant everything in these structures, how to maintain everything in these structures, how to harvest everything in these structures, and then how to prepare everything in these structures. Everything that we do, every element from building from the first shovel full of dirt that is taken from the earth to planting to complete harvesting and maintaining and then long-term maintenance and evolution of these structures, all of that is part of our open source plan so that people can start building self-sufficient food infrastructure. How amazing would it be to make these school projects? How amazing would this be to make it college projects? How amazing would this be to make these community projects within your local communities and urban environments? And of course, how amazing would it be to create complete food self-sufficiency for anybody that wants it? To be able to grow not just great food, but a diversity and quality of food far surpassing what it is that you can get at the grocery store. And that's, I just keep saying that, that's what we're doing. And so this is a big part of uh, our approach to global transformation, making a huge difference in the way that people not only eat food, but how people look at food, how people perceive food and their relationship to the food that they're eating and um, how much control they have over their food supply. So that, uh, uh, now moving on to housing. So um, some big updates in housing. Uh, Earthbag Village, small update in Earthbag Village, thanks to Devin Porter. Uh, he did some work this week 
on the windows we've got our ADA um, units now placed in the central ring of the Earthbag Village. It looks fantastic as well as some window updates and door updates for that. So like I said there's images posted in the written blog and you can get the link to that in the YouTube description. Uh, in the Straw Bale Village, thanks to the work of Dave Wallen, is moving forward as well in CAD. And so we now have an image posted with all of the units now in the Straw Bale Village, which is the Earthbag Village, as I've said before, is maximal affor maximally affordable housing. The Straw Bale and sustainable housing. The Straw Bale Village is sustainable housing that is modularly expandable. And so you can see the details of all of the different individual units now placed, all the different living units placed within the Straw Bale Village, um, thanks to the great work of Dave Wallen. And uh, it's cool to see that developing in CAD. And so now we're starting to work on the central area of that, and we're starting to add in the details to the communal dining area, or communal kitchen area, the recreational spaces that are in the center, uh, the rest of the landscaping that goes around the outside, because all these all of these village models produce food as well. And so big progress on the Strawvale Village there. And let's see, and then I mentioned uh, Sego Center. So Sego Center Duplicable City Hub is a big part of redefining the way that people look at housing, the way that people look at the way that they live by creating really beautiful central um, city hubs that then replace individual dining rooms, individual kitchens, individual laundry rooms, all this stuff. doesn't have to be that way, but that's the models that we're designing so that people can have these really beautiful communal spaces and save those resources, save tons of money, save tons of resources, and create a truly better for a better and more beautiful environment to hang out then than, in, than most people experience uh, in their homes. And then these recreational spaces and places to get away and things like that are also included in all of the food infrastructure and all the other aspects of the different complete uh, teacher demonstration communities, village, and city hub models that we're designing. And so there's lots of opportunities for people to have additional private spaces that are really beautiful, as well as, of course, in your home where you could go and just be private and, and get away from things there. So um, in the Sego Center, the updates that we have this week is uh, we have added in stairs. So it's a big deal when you're doing custom stairs, 3D stairs, and SketchUp. So we're bringing this whole thing together. We're really you know, devi defining the envelope, defining the details, and working out any of the things that we hadn't seen that really didn't show up for us when we were doing it in 2D. So now as we're progressing in 3D, we've got stairs in the dining dome. We have the primary stairway has been now added in. The basics of that has been added in next to the ADA compliant elevator and so um, those stairs and then behind the scenes we're now working in the dining dome to finish up the primary cooking area uh, to finish up the uh, there's we're putting in a cleaning closet in there and to finish up the secondary dishwashing area and secondary food uh, pickup area or food service area in the dining dome and so there's a whole bunch of little pieces that are coming together they're not finished enough to share pictures with you yet but hopefully in the next week we should have some more pictures with that. The big update though for the Sago Center is getting the stairs in for the dining dome and getting the primary stairs in for access to the second, third, and fourth floor um, from that central from the central area. If you want to see images of that, click on the link as always in the YouTube description and you can see it in the written blog. Last but not least, education progress. So education for life programs and open source and free shared education model designed to take free education anywhere in the world that has an internet connection or even places that don't because it will be something that could be printed out but more importantly the model as a whole is building the infrastructure so that we take internet to the places that don't have it we get power and energy infrastructure to the places in the world that don't have it we put the the power of education uh, and and an evolved and improved education model in the hands of anybody that wants it so that it can be applied in traditional environments, so it can be applied in homeschooling environments, so it can be applied in community environments, so it can be applied even in, in just individual environment for personal enrichment. And so the Education for Life program is designed all around that. And this last week we completed uh, 1.0 of the math templates. So we've got the templates up. All the, te the template is done now for all the major subjects. And now what we're doing is we're starting to flesh out the first one of those subjects, which is really a process of dropping in a whole bunch of different icons. We've done the research for the icons that we're gonna use. It's breaking up the entire subject of math 
that people would be experiencing uh, in, in all the way up through high school and into college and saying, okay, if you were to really become an expert at math, what is it that you would need to know and what would it look like if you were taking that as your goal is really superior math skills and applied math knowledge. Uh, how, would you, how would you teach that starting from pre-kindergarten, so preschool? And that's what we're starting to design. And so you can take a look at what that looks like. Uh, once again, that image also is included in the written blog. And um, we're excited to have that done. And now that we're looking at it, we took all the images that we had and we dropped them in there and said, okay, well, these icons look really good when you blow it up to the size that it is on the website. But what if you, what if you print it out? Like, how does this look on a piece of paper? And then how is that going to be used in a portfolio? Is it really functional? You know, is it what we want to see? And um, so you can see 1.0, it's going to evolve a lot and keep moving forward, but we're excited to have 1.0, put that up on the website so people can see what that looks like and um, just watch the evolution as this whole thing comes together. Along with that, behind the scenes, we've also um, done most of the social sciences timeline. In past blogs, I've talked about how we're creating a timeline for, once again, becoming an expert in math. And then we're saying, okay, well, if we take this timeline and we break it up so it's not a timeline, which is the way traditional education is. Instead, we make it more of a circle so that a student that does really well in one area can, can emphasize that area and excel in that area without being held back by a strict timeline system. And at the same time, where it's designed in such a way that you can really create a challenging environment for students that has a big why. And the why is, why am I learning this? Why is this important to me? And all of that is built underneath other headings, which are the weekly themes. And so we've got mind maps that we've done for, that we're working on, and we've started the outlines for 30 different themes, the first 30 lesson plans. And those would be weekly themes, and then within the weekly theme, we have all the details of what would be taught for math, what would be taught for English, what would be taught for science, what would be taught for social studies, what would be taught for art and uh, music. All those things go underneath that, underneath that weekly theme, and then those things teach what's in the template, what's in the subject template. And so in creating a portfolio so that it's not a linear path from here to there. Instead, it's an idea of saying, okay, we're going to teach you how to use this information in real time in relation to this theme, how to learn and apply this information and use it so it's not just book knowledge and how it's all interrelated. So if you have a theme like time, is one of the themes, it's a great example of a theme, and you're teaching art and music in relation to time, or you're teaching math in relation to time, and you're teaching social sciences in relation to time, like what is the evolution of maps over time? How did country lines evolve over time? How did these different borders and things evolve over time? And you apply that to different age groups. For instance, for a very little child, it'd be like, look at how just your bedroom has evolved over time. Look at how it's evolved as you've grown up and now you no longer have baby toys, now you have other toddler toys and things like that. Look at how your space has evolved in relation to time as an as a element of social sciences. Well, you know, an older child, you could say, well, look at how your state has evolved over time and or look at how the your country has evolved over time. And then as you get into the higher levels, look at how the world has evolved over time. And so the idea is within this, this overarching theme to be able to teach all of the different subjects and to make it very relevant, to make it really relevant and interesting. So applied knowledge instead of just learned knowledge and to make it a lot more fun. And so the Education for Life program, you'd have to take a look at the details on the website to really see the scope and magnitude of it because it is huge. But we're redesigning education and we're redesigning it in a way that can be used with traditional education models that can be used in homeschooling environments, can be used pretty much in any way that anybody wants, just like everything that we're doing. And the reason for that is because we want to create solutions that can be applied in as many ways as possible, in ways that people want, and the individual ways that work for people. And um, this is our approach to transforming the global environment, is, is looking at the very foundations, the very roots, the very essence of how it is that we choose to live our life, how it is that we choose to uh, enrich and evolve ourselves, how it is that we choose to interact with our global community, with our local community, how it is that we choose to cooperate and collaborate with each other and with the people around us, 
and building an infrastructure that is truly for the highest good of all, that says, hey, we can do the right thing. We can live in integrity. We can really create a structure that gives more than it takes, that redefines how people look at living in a really positive and beautiful way that enriches our individual lives, that, as I've said before, addresses the very foundations of how decisions are being made uh, and policies are being made on the higher governmental levels and putting the power of people, the power back into people's hands for control over their own lives. And this is all foundational to a new economic model for looking at resource-based economies and the cooperative society and how that works using a resource-based economy um, as, a, as, a, as a collaborative group, but also looking at traditional capitalist models, for-profit, non-profit models, and saying, well, how can we create highest good of all versions of this as well? And address the found foundations of our economic system in a way that is proactive and productive and positive also. And this whole model is like that. The whole idea is that if we can demonstrate, if we can make it easy enough, if we can make it affordable enough, and if we can make it attractive enough, if we can show enough individual benefit through things like super artistic and beautiful homes, through a superior education program so that people know that they're, so that they have a hands-on uh, uh, relationship with their children's education if that's what they want, so that they have higher quality food, higher quality water, cleaner air, um, a better living environment. If we can make all of those things and bring those together, then people want to create this and duplicate it, spread it around the world. And we have the opportunity through that to create something that is truly self becomes self-replicating to experience exponential growth. And not exponential growth of one model, exponential growth of a broad diversity of models representative of the individual ideas and the collaborative group ideas of the diversity of humanity, taking the infrastructure that we're providing and building it in a thousand different ways. 2,000 different ways and 10,000 different ways and revolutionizing the way that, that people live on this planet for the highest good of all in a way that works for people so that groups can come together in a lifestyle that works for them, that's superior to the current uh, paradigm for most people, will be considered by most people to be far superior to the way that we're living right now and it will use less resources, it will produce higher quality goods, it will support a more stable economy, it will uh, produce more intelligent people with a higher quality of education, it will address crime, inequality, social injustice, all of these things simultaneously. Sounds crazy? Look at our website. Check it out. See what it is that we're doing. Get involved in our project. I like to always wrap up with how people can help one community most right now, get involved. Get involved. Get involved or use what it is that we're creating and start evolving it on your own. Everything we do is open source and free shared and we're doing it to give it to people so that people can take these ideas and they can evolve them and make them even better. It's a launch point for sustainable, highest good for all civilizations. Because it's got to start somewhere. That's what we're looking to do complete reinvention of the way that people look at, at the way that they live and, um, and expanding the choices that people have in their lives and transforming the global environment positively and permanently for everyone and everything through either modular solutions that people might apply in their backyard to complete teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. This is what it is that we're doing. And... Um, we're excited to share it. So how can people help one community right now? What's the number one way? We are still seeking that one person that would like to invest in one community and help us get the property off the market. If you'd like to see what it is that we're looking for, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding is what it is that we're seeking in the way of funding. If you know somebody, you think you know somebody that might be able to fund this vision and either invest in it or to contribute to our 501c3 nonprofit organization, that's the number one thing that people can do right now. The other thing, the number two thing that people can do, and there's a bunch of them, is join our organization. Get involved. We're always looking for people that want to be the people that are going to move onto the property and actually build one community, as well as people that want to just donate and contribute their time with our team of volunteers and be a part of what it is that we're creating, uh, as well as people that might want to be satellite pioneers 
or just people who want to support us through sharing what it is that we're doing on the internet. So just um, you know, getting the word out and helping us in that way as well. So with that, I will say thank you very much, as always, for everybody that follows our project. Thanks for all the wonderful things that people say. Thank you for all the emails. Thank you for all the collaborative input. Um, most of our pages, our open source pages, have a suggestions link on them. So if you see something there and an idea to improve it or an area that you'd like to see using that suggestions link or if you catch an edit or something like that, people are helping us out all the time when they see, time when they see something that can be improved. Thank you, everyone, for all those little edits and um, comments and things like that. Same thing with comments on our YouTube channel, comments on our Facebook page, comments anywhere that you make comments on all of our social media networks. We always address those, and questions are also very much appreciated because we add every single question that we get. If it's not already addressed on the website in some way, uh, we add those to the frequently asked questions section or frequently answered questions section down on the bottom of the pages so the pages continue to become more comprehensive and uh, of even higher quality. So thank you again. Have a great week. And until next week, uh, namaste. Namaste. And huge gratitude from one community to the global community. Transforming the global environment for the highest good of all. Thanks, everyone.